Hi, it's Anna. Welcome back to Books on the Go. I'm here with a quick update today on the books that are coming up on the podcast, which also doubles up as a sort of end of September wrap up because I did a wrap up midway through the month, which has left me out of kilter with the monthly wrap ups. So this way I'll be able to let you know what I've been reading in the last bit of September. And the first one coming up is Great Circle by Maggie Shipstead, which has been shortlisted for the Booker Prize. It's very chunky, um, but it, quite an easy read. And um, Annie and I read this one, yes, we read this one recently and discussed it. And I have to finish editing that episode and then that will be up in the next day or two. So that's coming up very soon. We both really enjoyed it. I think Annie loved it even more than I did. And um, it did... It had been compared to Donna Tartt and I think that I don't get on with Donna Tartt but I think that is a good comparison because you get swept into a big story. It's quite epic and you get lots of intricate details so you can get really sort of immersed in the story and the this has got a lot about the history of aviation and one of the main storyline about Marion and her big flight is sort of sweeps over over a hundred years. It even starts before she's born. So you get a full picture of her story. And the other one is a modern day story with Hadley, who's an actor and is playing Marion in the biopic of her life. And that one is, that's a more everyday sort of story. So in, in terms of the booker, I think the modern day story, if that was a standalone novel, Annie compared it to Taylor Jenkins' Read. And in that sense, it's very well observed, really readable, but it wouldn't be what I'd think of as a booker award-winning story. But it works well in juxtaposition with Marion's story in great circle so that it does work but yeah I found it a little bit over long and it's interesting when you read a book that's shortlisted for the booker because you come to it with a more critical eye and you you know your ex, your expectations are higher um, but a really enjoyable read uh, if you're looking for that big story to get swept into and immerse yourself in. So that's Great Circle by Maggie Shipstead. Another one that we've just recorded, I did this one with Amanda, Real Estate by Deborah Levy. I loved this. It depends what you're in the mood for reading, but this one I had to just adjust to the pace of it. So it's quite intimate. It's about, it's a living autobiography it's the third volume in Deborah Levy's three non-fiction sort of autobiographies and one the previous one was the cost of living and the first one I think was things I don't want to know or something like that that was written in response to uh, the essay by George Orwell why I write so this third one real estate she's now 59 I believe and she's um, separated from her husband which was the subject of the previous book and so she's on her own her daughters are going to university so she's really on her own for the first time and so I liked that because it gives her this independence and freedom and there's also some loneliness that comes with that but it was beautifully explored but she also travels so she goes to Paris because she has a fellowship to study or to, to work there and she also goes to back to London I think Mumbai Amanda remembered this better than I did but there were some other destinations and then Greece towards the end which was just delightful so I really loved it and it got me thinking about because she's so erudite but she's not um, heavy-handed with her literary references and she's not pompous about it at all and equally she's not that sort of young author who's really earnest with it which I did find a bit in the Sally Rooney novel where they're sort of earnestly talking about capitalism and things and it's a bit cringy but Deborah Levy's mature she's um, self-aware and when she raises a you know when she refers to a philosopher or a writer or an artist it's with this sense of curiosity but really grounded you know, knowledge, hard-earned knowledge about these things, but also um, just questioning and it's like she's exploring these issues, um, but in a, a sort of in a wise way. So it's a beautiful tone. I really enjoyed it. It's quite a comforting read. It's, 
yeah, it's intellectual without being too heavy. And then there's the just the day to day things as well with her friends and her relationships and her, you know, life in these other cities. So it was like uh, one of the genres that I really enjoy, which which is like a travel memoir and I it reminded me a bit of Hisham Matar's A Month in Siena which had a similar vibe where he goes to Siena to look at the artwork but you also get a bit of the day-to-day and it's hanging out with someone who's really intelligent great company um, there's a sense of humor as well and yeah highly recommend it so that's real estate and I should go back and read the others in this um, series as well. That's Deborah Levy. Now, another novel that I'm doing with Annie, Rabbits for Food by Binny Kirschenbaum, and this was recommended by Molly, one of our listeners. I think I did this in a book haul video maybe, so you might have seen this, but I had never heard of it. I hadn't heard of Binny Kirschenbaum until Molly recommended her. I'm really glad she did. Um, I really loved this it's a novel about bunny and it started off being I think I think a bit more autobiographical than it was and then Binny Kirschenbaum said she just kept the name because that was who the character was by that stage but it's um, draws on some of her experiences Binny Kirschenbaum herself has also experienced the, some of the mental health issues that bunny the character has so bunny's going through a breakdown and she's had sort of debilitating depression and struggle to get off the couch and it comes to a head on New Year's Eve and she ends up in a psychiatric ward and it's so there's a lot of I know this sounds strange but there is a lot of humor to be had in a psychiatric ward which I think if you have had that experience you can make those jokes I don't know how it would work someone else trying to make those jokes but the author and certainly the character are in that tough place having that really confronting experience and so there's that sort of black humor that can come with that and she is a very funny writer so it's confronting but it is it made me laugh so it might depend on your sense of humor but it's also what I really loved about the book is that it's so true um, it really rings true and the character of Bunny she does this thing which other books haven't done for me where they've had a character with let's say depression or living with some sort of mental illness where she bunny is unlikable and she'll say she's unlikable but she's still really a character that you empathize with and you understand her I think that's the thing that I have not found in a couple of other books that I would compare it with and this one I under I would think okay bunny's quite spiky she's quite difficult she herself says she's hard to like but then there's this beautiful line where she says even people who are hard to like have feelings too and it's um, you know, she can still have her feelings hurt by things, even though she comes across as not liking other people, for example. So it's really, really um, got a depth and a heart to it that that combined with the humour, I think, make it a very strong book. So anyway, I'll be interested to hear what Annie thinks. That's coming up soon. That's Rabbits for Food. Then uh, one, I don't know if we're doing this or not, but Harlem Shuffle by Colson Whitehead, which we've been very excited about. It's a new novel by him uh, following on from The Nickel Boys and Underground Railroad. So it's a crime novel set in Harlem in the 1960s about a heist and the main character, Carney, is a middleman or a fence um, where he has a legitimate furniture shop but then he has stolen goods out the back. And so that all sounds really fun. I'm finding at the start of it, it's moving quite slowly and it's sort of beautifully, of course, captures the place and the characters and his writing is absolutely exquisite, but I'm not sort of feeling the dramatic tension. So I don't know, it might... I'll just give it a bit longer to see how I go with it and I'll see if Annie's reading it. But we'll, um, if she is, we'll have an interesting discussion about this one, I think. And the other one which we're also excited about is Matrix by Lauren Groff. So I got this in the book haul as well. Can't wait. I keep hearing amazing things and I haven't started it yet. So let me know if you've been reading this one. I think Annie and I will do this in a couple of weeks so stay tuned and that is coming up on the podcast let me know what you've been reading and I will see you soon bye mm-hmm.